Hey guys, Trey back again with another video. And in, in the last video, we updated this put method by adding on our ID to this URL. So now we have this as a parameter. We're getting it here and we're passing it in here for this query. All right, that was a simple video. Just wanted to make that update. Um, in this video, we're going to get into some front end code. So um, I know I promised that last time, so we're going to actually get into it this time. Um, what we need to do is actually create a folder that's going to hold our front end code because this back end code and our front end code can be two different things. So basically, this back end is just going to be an API. The front end is going to be the front end that calls this API to get the information back from it. So um, the way you can do this, we're going to use React, of course, because that's what I like to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a new folder for that. So what you can do is you can type in npx um, in your terminal and then type create react app and then give it a name and then you'll hit enter and it'll do its thing and create you a new folder with that name so once that folder pops up you can do cd into uh, whatever you named it all right and then you'll be in that folder um, and then to add it into VS Code, what we'll do is go up here to uh, File. We'll go to Add Folder to Workspace. You find that folder, you click on it, and you open it up, and it'll pop up in here with your other backend code. So now you have your backend code up here, frontend code here. All right. So once you get in here, um, I it, yours is going to look slightly different. Your directory structure. Because I came here, I deleted a lot of files that I didn't want. So um, you can go through, look, update your files, delete them however you want. Um, just make sure you keep your index.js, index.css, app.js, app.css, and your index. Uh, you don't really need the manifest or the robots.txt, but I kept them anyway. Um, make sure you added your uh, env file here. You don't need to stall .env with React because if you um, basically it already comes pre-installed and all you need to do is put um, React app in front of whatever your name is. So you'll do React underscore app underscore and then whatever the name of your environment variable will be. And then throw the, uh, the address that you're using for your back end. So right now we have it set to 3000 so I have this set to 3000. But as we know, React's going to want to use um, port 3000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the back end code to use 3001. So I'm going to do that here in the env file inside of our front end code. And then I'm going to go to our back end code and go to the env file um, and set our port. So we're going to go here. We're going to say port equals 3001. And then we can go to our server JS and set the port here so we're going to say comp port equals process dot env dot port and that should get our port for us and then if we scroll down to our list and instead of putting 3000 we're going to set this to port and then i'm going to change these um double quotes I'm gonna change these to back ticks and then I'm gonna set this to port like that so that we can print out the port that we're on all right so that will change our port for our back end and if we go back to our front end env file we see that we set it here as well so this should all match up now I'm gonna close these out and now what we want to do is add in our code to get information from this back end code. So the back end is hosting our API, which exposes our CRUD methods for our ticketing system. So what we want to do is in the, um, in our front end code, we want to create a service that will allow us to hit those 
API endpoints, the um, post, put, get, and delete. All right, so what we're going to do is under, sor under our source folder, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it service. And then under this folder, we're going to create a new file, and we're going to call it um, ticket service dot js all right so this is going to be our ticket service so inside of here we just want to um, let's do a let's make a function that's going to allow us to get all of the tickets all right so what we're going to do is we're going to say well let's export it say export const and then well, let's say fetch fetch all tickets and then we will create this function here inside of this function we just need to fetch every fetch all the tickets from our backend code all right so we're, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the fetch api and that's just built into node so you don't have to import anything so what you can do is um we will say return and then we're going to actually um, call our backend. So we're going to say fetch. And then we need to put in our URL. So our URL will be HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And then it's 3001. Remember, because we changed our port number. And then it's slash all. All right. So if we go back to our server.js file in our backend code we'll see that um where is it here we go so here's our git for all so remember we do slash all so that's why we put that there here all right and there's one other thing we need to do so this fetch is um an asynchronous function so it's going it's going to return a promise so what we need to do is we need to make this function an asynchronous function so that we can wait for this fetch to return a response if you're not familiar with um, asynchronous JavaScript um, just go watch a video I'm pretty sure somebody's made plenty of videos about that you can just understand what's actually happening with this async await that we're using here so uh, make sure you put this async in front of your function also when you return call await and then we'll fetch this and then the last thing is say dot json all right so we're gonna get the json from our response and then we will uh, return this well this is kind of let me I'm gonna rewrite this because this looks a little funny so let me let me rewrite this okay so from this point we have um, we're getting our, our raw response by just calling the API so we have to await that because this fetch is going to go off and do its thing and we want to wait for it to actually return the information once the information comes back we say hey we want that response and now that we have that response we can uh, get the JSON content from it which is basically the body so we're grabbing the body in JSON format and we are waiting for that function to complete and once it completes we return that to whoever called this function which will give us all of our tickets so that's is what that's what this is doing so now uh, we can go back to our app.js file and here once again uh, when you click on it for the first time you'll have a bunch of stuff in here just delete everything in between uh, the the outer divs and inside of here we can um, call our service and get the tickets back and put them out here so what we're going to do is we're going to import our uh, ticket service method so we're going to say import and inside of the curly braces we're going to say fetch all tickets and then we're going to say from and then we're going to have to pass in the path to our service so we're going to say we're going to do dot slash service slash ticket service all right so that should get our function out of there now what we need to do is we need to call this function anytime the page is loaded so the way we're going to do this is by using react's use effect 
and use state. So the state's going to hold the um, tickets once we get them back from the um, API. And the use effect is what's going to allow us to call it immediately when the page is loaded. All right. So at the top, what we're going to want to do is we're going to say import. And then we'll say use effect and use state from React. All right. So now we've pulled those in. And inside of our app function, we're going to uh, declare our state. So we're going to say use state. I'm going to use this state snippet so it kind of just fills everything out for me. And um, the first thing we want to do is set our tickets. So we'll do tickets and I'm going to set this to an empty array to start with. OK. And then after this, we need to go ahead and do our use effect, which will call our um, fetch all tickets function. So we're going to say use effect. And I'm going to also use a snippet for this. I'm just going to erase pretty much everything in here and also everything from there. So at this point, we just need to call our function. So we're going to say get all tickets. And our get all tickets function we will have to create up here and it's going to be an asynchronous function so that we can wait for all of this stuff to happen. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to say const get all tickets and then we'll say async. And then inside of here, we want to call our fetch all tickets. So we're going to say set tickets and then we're going to say await fetch all tickets okay so what's going to happen here is we're going to set our tickets which is up here this is our state we set that to whatever we get back from fetch all tickets so this will have this tickets state here it will be set with everything that comes back from fetch all tickets and then we can use that to actually display on the screen so if we go down here to this return statement we can go ahead and print this out on the screen using um, a loop. So we're we'll just loop through all the tickets that we got back and print them out on the screen one by one. So the way we do this is we're going to start by um, going inside of this div, uh, type curly braces, and then we're going to say tickets dot map. And then we're going to inside of here, we're going to put another set of parentheses. Then we're going to say ticket and then also the index. And then we're going to do an arrow function. Underneath this arrow function, we want to um, create a paragraph tag. I'm going to give it a key of index. And then inside of here, we're just going to uh, do some more curlies. And then we'll say ticket.id. So to start off with, we'll just do something simple and print out the ID of each ticket. All right. So at this point, we should be able to see this ticket ID. I'm also going to throw on top of this an H1 that says tickets just to have it. All right, so let's see if we can print out our ticket. So the first thing we need to do is start up our back end and then we can start up this front end code. All right, so I'm going to go down here. I'm going to create another terminal. And then in this terminal, I'm going to go ahead and start up the back end by typing node server.js all right so it says server started on port 3001 i'm going to go up here let me switch to the new folder and then inside of here i want to um, start up the front end so we're going to type in npm run start and this will start up a development server for us in our browser all right. As you can see, the browser automatically pops up and then we see our header, which says tickets. And then we see our ticket ID, which is what we printed out, which is one. All right. So that is working. So um, from here, we can go ahead and print out the rest of the information if we want to. So what we can do is instead of setting that to a P, let's set this to a div. And I'm going to pull this out and inside this div, we'll just create a bunch of uh, P tags with the information 
than a ticket has. So I do a P ticket ID. What else does a ticket have? All right. So now I have put all those in there. I hit save and we should be able to see the changes here. And we do. So uh, we're printing out the ticket. We print out the ID, the summary, priority, um, status, create date, and update date. All right, as you can see, we are getting the ticket information. So if we add another ticket, then it will show up there as well. And what we're going to do is I'm going to throw a border on here just to do it so that we can separate these tickets when we do actually have more tickets. So we're going to say border. I'll say one, oh, one pixel solid. Let me close this out. And then let's just do black. So there we go. Now we see that it has a border. Let's go ahead and um, actually, I think we're going to stop here for this video. Yeah, because it's kind of long. So we'll stop here. And in the next video, we'll add the rest of the CRUD methods to our ticket service here. And then we'll get into creating more of an actual app. So that's pretty much it for this video. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. Now, I'll see you guys in the next video.